tomorrow will be brighter than the good old days. Tell it to me, sweet. Hello, sweet. Hello, darling. Well, hello. Hey, look, there's darling. Ethel. Barbara, Carol, Pearl, Angela, Bette, Bernadette, Judy, Liza, Cheetah, Elaine, Audra, the list goes on and on and on. Gay show queens love their divas. And why wouldn't they? In early musicals, there were no gay characters, and in the mid-century musicals, where gay characters start popping up, they are either evil... You couldn't get him away from his wife, huh? Well, I could. How, is he crazy about you? Oh, very funny. Or tragic. But what really bothered me was I didn't know how to be a man. Why idolize that when instead you can adore the glamorous, fabulous show diva who all the chorus boys swoon over? There are a lot of things that make these ladies into icons for the gays. Some launched their careers in gay clubs and capitalized on their camp appeal. Others befriended the gay men already working in the entertainment industry. And many embodied and projected this sense of tragedy and power and resilience that has become a core part of the gay self-narrative. Now, we can't talk about all of them, but here's a sampling. Of course, we must start with Judy Garland, or rather, Dorothy Gale. Picture it, a young girl who can't seem to do anything right longs for escape. She is swept away to a literally more colorful and fabulous land to go adventuring with sassy male companions. The MGM Wizard of Oz is gay musical theater. They don't call us friends of Dorothy for nothing. Judy too became a gay icon. In her later years, Garland's gay audience, who had all religiously followed her trials and tribulations, could read in their own tragedy and resilience. People have written dissertations on Judy Garland as a queer icon. There is too much to cover, but her existence and creation of much of the contemporary musical theater world is a big part of what makes it gay. On a different side of the personality spectrum is Ethel Merman. What gay musical theater fan hasn't done Ethel, as they say? I had a dream, a dream for guess who, Lydia. Loud, brassy, take no prisoners, Ethel Merman wears her femininity like drag. But he can't fill your houses with buckshot. She is not the gal who gets the guy, she's the gal who gets what she wants. There is a subversion of gender norms that happens with Ethel that would also happen with later divas like Carol and Bette and Cheetah and Elaine. It's less, I am woman, hear me roar, and more, shut the hell up or I'll give you a black eye. In a world where gays were lambasted for their sissiness, here was a diva turning her femininity into power. It's from this bitchy broad persona that a lot of contemporary drag performance stems. Turning the stereotypical and chauvinistic ideal of femininity on its head. That is Ethel Merman. That is what she brought to her gaze and to her musical theater. This is Jerry Herman, the youngest composer, lyricist on Broadway. Creator of the score for the current smash hit 
Hello, Dolly, winner of the Tony Award in 1964 as Best Musical. He also wrote the songs for Broadway's Milk and Honey. He is currently preparing words and music for a musical version of Andy Mann. No one made a career out of writing shows for divas quite like Jerry Herman. Our leading lady descends a staircase to the adoration of all the chorus boys and belts out her torch song about how fantastical life is. Light the candles, get the eyes out, roll the rug up, it's today. Herman's shows, Mame and Hello Dolly, are quite literally structured around this diva worship. Mame, through a queered reading, is the story of how a socialite diva discovers that despite her best efforts, her surrogate son turns out to be straight. There is gay imagery all over this musical. The man in the moon is a lady. Or in Dolly, just start with her Harmonia Gardens top of the stairs dress. This is an outfit that no actual woman would wear. Exaggerated femininity. The female as power. This musical can be interpreted as the story of turning gender norms on their head. Vandergelder starts with chauvinistic, preconceived notions of what it means to be a woman. Oh yes, it takes a woman. Only to have them shaken up and thrown back in his face by the indefatigable Dolly Levi. Also, a very strong feminist representation. Without explicit gay characters, strong, powerful female characters are about as close as gay audiences can sometimes get to finding icons and role models. All of these diva stereotypes and thinly veiled gay readings come to head in Herman's third and most critical of diva musicals, La Cage a Folle. You may be dancing with a girl who needs a shave We're both the riffraff and the royalty Our patrons at La Cache Oh, fire! In this musical, our diva apparent is no longer a powerful actress in an exaggerated spin on female drag. This time, it's an actual drag queen coping with their own expressed sissiness. No longer are gay men reading in their own relationships. This is an actual, honest-to-goodness, homosexual protagonist relationship on stage. Every gay musical theater stereotype is put under a microscope in Lacage. From performed masculinity to subverting gender norms to different family structures, it's all in there. This musical also gave us the first gay anthem of musical theater. I am what I am. I am my own special creation. So come take a look. Give me the hook. The ovation. It was camp, it was drag, it was daring, and of course, it was about a diva. Lacage is looked on by many as the watershed of gay representation in musical theater. Now, compared to the sitcom standard of 2016, much of this musical seems dated and benign today. But in a world of deep, nuanced, gay-coded musical theater writing and performance, coming right out with I am what I am was a pretty big step. There is one more diva musical that I want to mention because it has some very specifically important representation. Thirteen years before We Were What We Were in Lacage, this show, Applause, a musicalized version of All About Eve, has the most explicit representation of diva worship ever to appear on stage. Margot Channing, the aging diva, forgoes her opening night party in favor of accompanying her flamboyant dresser on a night out in the village. And, well... Margot Channing! Giraffe, I've been recognized. I don't believe it. Here, I mean, did you open tonight the Buzz Richards play? Guilty! This is a historic moment. Oh. 
Duane, I'm spoiling all the fun. Shall I call the party and tell them that you'll be there soon? Don't go. Stay. Are you kidding? I'm here for the night! Imagine being in a gay bar and having Ethel Merman stumble in. It would be madness.